Yeah, and, and Alex, all of this, you're taking this on in addition to obviously what has been an incredible business uh, environment for J&J &J and also uh, ahead of this tax plan that we're getting. You've been shifting toward pharma. It's been deliberate. Is it working? Well, look, there's a lot of change going on in healthcare, whether you're in the VA, whether you're in the civilian system, absolutely. And, you know, what we're really excited about is just the rapid transformation of science that we're seeing. Uh, I mean, having been in this industry for over 30 years, and you see the advancement that's taking place now, whether it's due to genomics, better, more precision medicine, better understanding some of the underlying disease, we're seeing incredible breakthroughs. And in fact, you know, you think about something like HIV. When I came into this industry 30 years ago, if you were diagnosed with HIV, you may have two years to live. Wow. Today, if treated with the appropriate drug regimen, it can only take two years off the average lifespan. That's a radical transformation, and that's why we're so excited about what's going on in the pharmaceutical segment in particular. Yeah, and, and, you, and you've been focused on HIV, obviously. Yes. Um, but the pharmaceutical sector and shifting more, shifting J&J &J more toward the pharmaceutical uh, sector is really interesting. And, and of course, this week, I've got to get your take on this deal that was announced. Uh, CVS wants to acquire Aetna, reportedly offering to acquire Aetna at a deal value at more than $66 billion. If this deal goes through, insurers can drive down high U.S. drug prices by cutting out the middleman. What is this all about, the Aetna CVS deal, in your view? Well, I think it's about the transformation, the change that we're seeing in healthcare. care. You know, there's pressure all the way around. Demand is going up. Systems are going through a lot of change. I think what's important in all this is that we don't lose focus of the patient, because at the end of the day, a lot of things are going to change. We have to stay patient-centered. And, and secondly, we are very proud of the important impact that pharma is making. And if you take a look overall at health care costs, only about 14 percent is related to pharmaceuticals. And yet if you look back over the last 50, 60 years, and frankly the improvement in morbidity, mortality, and average lifespan going from the late 50s to late 70s, a lot of that is due to the tremendous advancements that we've seen in the pharmaceutical uh, area. So yeah, know, we, we, look, we look forward to working with the partners. I think we're going to see more change, and we've got to change with it. It, it, it is certainly about science, and, we, and we've talked about this a number of times together, longevity and, and uh, getting in front of disease, but is it also about Amazon? You know, Amazon just gets the license for pharmaceuticals. I mean, they're, they're putting, they're putting uh, the CVSs of the world actually on notice in terms of retail. Is that also part of that deal? Well, look, I think Amazon's a piece of it, but I think there's a lot of different components. And I think in addition to the science evolving, the business models are going to have to evolve. And I think, you know, at, we have a market-based system. As it evolves, it'll get more effective, more efficient. And frankly, I think that has the potential to be in the best interest of patients and the entire system. All right, final word for you, Dr. Shulkin. What is going to be your measure, your progress status check when you look out five years in terms of the VA being different under your leadership? Well, for us, better. Our, we don't have a stock price like Johnson & Johnson. Right. Our stock price is the trust that veterans have in the VA. And that's something that we lost in 2014 in our wait time crisis. And that's really our measure, to make sure that veterans know that we are there for them, that we're serving them, that when they go off and raise their hand for conflict and they come back and they need help, that we're there for them not only that day, but for as long as they need us. And, you, and you'll keep using that as the measure y years out. That's our measure. R real quick before you go, Alex, we're getting the details on the tax plan Wednesday. You've worked a lot on taxes, particularly yeah. the repatriation part. I know that's important right. to you. Do you think it moves the needle on economic growth? Would you be poised to take money from overseas and bring it back home? Absolutely. Look, I, I think it has the potential to not only one, grow the economy, but to grow U.S jobs and to lower the tax rate, to put in something for repatriation, to go to a territorial system, uh, I'm very optimistic and I think it can have a significant impact on, again, growing our economy and getting more jobs. Well, there's a reason that people take their headquarters and go to Ireland. Absolutely. And look, we, we've got to take away some of these, you know, the, the current uh, confusion, frankly, in the tax system that leads to companies doing those kind of things. And uh, so, again, I'm, uh, I'm you know, optimistic. Uh, yeah. but but uh, I, I think it could really lead to a significant boost for our economy. You like the right. plan so far? You, you like what the Look, House Republicans have put I think together? the sausage is still being made. Yeah, I think we have to right. see how it all comes out. But from what I'm hearing so far, I think the major tenants that I mentioned earlier, they're definitely on the right track. Alex Gorski, good to see you. Secretary Shulkin, always a pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, Maria. Happy Veterans Day Thank you. to Thank you. our nation's heroes.